Thank you, Professor Borato and organizers for having me here. It's a pleasure in every year to, to attend this uh, wonderful Congress. So um, I shall uh, go to my next presentation. So um, let's um, present you the first uh, case, first case among the six that I'm going to present in this uh, Congress. It's a 52 years old myopic lady, manager. She works a lot in the office and a lot of computer work, uh, drives uh, during the night a lot. And she came for refractive surgery, having this uh, refraction uh, with the 2020 visual acuity. And you see here the uh, dominant eye is the left one with minus 275 and a bit of um, with the wool astigmatism. And the non dominant eye is the right eye with minus 0.45. Normal tear film, normal anterior segment, uh, normal fundus exam, everything, OCT, topography, and amblyometry. So measurements that we make um, every day in our standard practice in these cases, everything looks fine. Um, I proposed the surgery for her because she was presbyopic uh, in the presbyopic age. Refractive lens exchange with implantation of a multifocal or trifocal or head of. I presented her all the possibilities, um, but um, uh, as uh, Professor Panietto said and uh, gave uh, an interesting um, correlation and, uh, and his uh, small history. The patient said that I should decide for her because she accepts, sorry, what uh, I recommend her. And took into consideration her work and her not, uh, desire of not having uh, uh, glare and uh, halos uh, in the night uh, driving. Um, I recommended her, um, this is a mistake here, but uh, the left eye is dominant and I recommended her plano and the left, uh, the right eye is non-dominant. Non, non I recommended her a little bit of minus 0.5. And uh, as always, we perform three different measurements with three different biometries, machines, similar results, different uh, formulas calculation. There are similar results, 15 recommended uh, uh, for um, the, uh, the right eye and 15.5 for the left eye. Uh, and we chose an head of IOL at the end, which um, at that time was um, uh, look smart with the diopters that you see here. Um, we started with a uh, dominant eye, left eye, uh, which was a standard for domestication, no problem, main incisions on steepest axis, uh, CCC 5.2, and like in all these cases. PCIOL in the back, well, um, centered, it was the plan. But I had an adverse event with the OOS during the preloaded IOL implantation in the left eye. It, the lens remained blocked in the cartridge, impossible to remove it without damage. So uh, we needed it to, um, uh, to take another preloaded LookSmart IOL, but another 15.5 was not available. So um, we didn't have any backup IOLs, and uh, we used the existing LookSmart 15 order for the other eye, which was already in the OR because the lady was supposed to have surgery in the next eye, which need, uh, in the next day, which needed 50. Um, then the next day we perform um, you know, the same surgery, eventless surgery with um, uh, the doctors that you see here. So let's see um, the um, refraction, uh, which was a bit variable um, uh, in the first month. Um, best corrective visual equity 2030, intermediate 2040, for the near it was 2050 in binocular. Uh, at three months and six months, we had a slightly improvement, as you see, and another improvement at one year uh, post-op, as a matter of fact, 13 months. Uh, it was quite good in binocular, and you can see here that the refraction became stable after three months. But the patient was not uh, happy. Um, at 30 months, uh, she had a lot of complaints about reading and working on the bureau desk computer. Uh, we prescribed her a spectacle for near, but didn't help. She could not read of the comments. She complained of looking in the computer or on the, on the desk. Uh, we prescribed her some progressive lenses for intermediate and near. Didn't help her either. In the meantime, she developed a bit of uh, moderate PCO that you see here in the pictures. Um, but maybe it's not that big for a monofocal IOL that could be significant for a presbyopic IOLs. And I was wondering, was that an additional cause of the poor quality vision for this patient? Should we la laser it? Um, we decided not to laser it because uh, we were supposed. If, if we will need in the future to change the IOL, it will not be uh, something good to do. Uh, so, um, after so many complaints, uh, the decision was taken to remove the edge of IOL and to re implantation of a trifocal IOL with concurrent posterior capsule polishing, which is a current practice uh, for me. And uh, usually, I have good results with polishing the posterior capsule when I have PCO. Uh, but there were some uh, interoperative challenges. If you want to, to start the video, please, for me. 
uh, first of all, there were difficulties difficulties in moving this in um, uh, relaxing and take it out this um, very soft and thin haptics. Uh, the anterior capsule was already fibrotic. Uh, the um, haptic was uh, caught in the back equator. As you see, you have to do very soft movements and uh, to pay a lot of attention because if you break the capsule, or you, you can spoil the whole procedure and uh, um, yeah, you can uh, lose the, your gold. Uh, so the uh, removal of the haptic was very careful done, one of them, the second, and then all uh, four of them. Uh, I, for the sake of time, I didn't uh, show everything in this video. I cut the um, uh, lens, usually you can cut it in two, but you can also cut it in three, and it's preferable if you don't want to enlarge the incision, and I didn't want to enlarge it, so I uh, just, um, at least not too much, um, I cut it in three pieces and I removed them. Uh, again, you can have some difficulties in uh, grasping the IOL because it's very soft, uh, especially the, the haptics are very soft. Anyway, I removed this um, IOL and I try to polish the posterior capsule as uh, I do quite frequent in my uh, practice, especially for myopic eyes, but it was impossible, not even a cell. I think I was not able to, to move it from the posterior capsule. It was more um, a fibrotic changes in, in this capsule. And then I'm planting um, trifocal panoptics IOL no financial interest for any of these products, for any of the products presented in any of my presentations today. So we can go to the next uh, slide. Uh, one month post, post IOL exchange, um, uh, Panoptics was well centered, uh, but PCO still present. And the patient was again unhappy with the uncorrected and best corrected visual equity that you see uh, presented here on the slide. In binocular, it was an improvement, of course. Um, in the anterior segment um, exam, we had a well-positioned trifocal IOL, PCO still there, and subjective, she had, again, some complaints. I still have difficulties when driving, no halos, but not sharp image. I am a bit better in the office and in front of the computer, but getting tired too early, I still have difficulties when reading. So I recommend her YAG laser capsotomy in both eyes. We did it, and two weeks post-YAG, I was a bit afraid because she was a myopic. I didn't want to have any complications on posterior segment like uh, retinal detachment, but I had no choice that to recommend her um, young capsulotomy. Uh, the visual acuity was significantly improved, uh, but she still has some uh, subjective complaints like this uh, piece of paper that she took from the supermarket and it was grayish, blue grayish, uh, uh, very difficult to read the um, what it would, was written there, and she said um, in the dim light, we were in the cabinet, I cannot read this, for example, doctor. And I said, neither uh, can I, but okay, I think the story will continue with this lady. Thank you very much.